All-American Evening at Dumars Barbecue in Norfolk, Virginia. Good evening, I'm Deborah Kent. Welcome to PM Magazine. You know, when you think of something that's All-American, you think of drive-ins, soda fountains, ice cream cones. You know, the only thing I'm missing is a barbershop quartet. When you need a welcome change of <laughs> What is it they say? Ask and it shall be given. Well, tonight we're going to get in a musical mood at a convention for barbershop quartets. The best barbershop singers in the land are gathered here, and they're bringing back the music of another age. But first, Matt's evening is not quite as enjoyable at the TV8 newsroom. Well, actually, Deborah, I'm in the way here in the Channel 8 newsroom because these people are working to put the 11 o'clock news on the air. And as the deadline for that show draws closer and closer, the stress level in this room can really start to rise. Well, tonight we'll meet a man who says that stress almost killed him. His name is Paul Shields, and he's a newscaster from Atlanta, Georgia, who says that if it wasn't for a good doctor and some very good treatments, he might not be here today. In our departments, Jerry Baker shows how to banish moles and gophers from your lawn. Captain Carrot reveals why oats and oat products are good for your heart. And Joan Embry introduces Tandy, a magnificent red-tailed hawk. All right, Kathy Cole is the producer of Eyewitness News. Now, Kathy, tell me, what goes through your mind when you look at that clock and realize it's almost time to go on the air? I start typing faster, <laughs> the perspiration starts pouring out, and we just work ourselves into a frenzy. Well, tonight we're going to meet a man who says the frenzy of the news business almost killed him. His name is Paul Shields, and he's a television newscaster in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, one day Paul's body just quit and said, no more, I can't take the pressure. But Paul found himself a good doctor, got some rather unusual treatments, and now he's on the road to recovery. PM Magazine's John Patrick will take us to Atlanta to meet Paul and find out about his rather unusual story. At age 46, anchorman Paul Shields is busily at work each day when most of us are just waking up. He rushes to meet deadlines, the most critical one at noon, in a half-hour newscast he produces, writes, then reads. Tasks requiring experience, judgment, and skill. On a busy news day like this one, with a fire at the famous Fox Theater, later that morning a hostage situation, each move he and others hard at work make must be efficient, precise, and orchestrated. What happened to him in 1969 was a shocking, devastating tragedy. In less than a year, Paul would be lying near death in the intensive care unit of Atlanta's Grady Hospital with what doctors thought was a rare and incurable neurological disease called Kutzfeld's Jacob Syndrome. It manifested itself in ever more frequent and ferocious seizures. What followed was confusion, permanent loss of memory, loss of balance, grand mal seizures, and incessant twitching. Finally, medication at the mental hospital he had been committed to would not control the seizures. Paul was rushed to the emergency room. Everyone thought his death was imminent. And my family tells me that on three separate occasions, they got a call from the nursing home that I wouldn't make it through the night. They took a pair of pajamas to the funeral home after the second call, which fortunately I have not claimed yet. However, a week later, he was back at the mental hospital, improved but still suffering the effects of the disease. It was there that he met psychologist Dr. John Perino, who began treating Paul, not for any disease, but for a severe stress reaction. Now, I worked with him with some stress management techniques, and we found out, surprisingly enough, that he did not have a neurological disease, that what the stress problem produced in him was something that looked very much like a neurological problem, like a neurological disease. We started working with him with relaxation techniques and a stress management technique called desensitization, and he started learning to cope with the stress in his life better and better, and he amazingly started coming out of it. The seizures started reducing, the memory started getting better, he wasn't quite as confused and disoriented, and over a period of about two to three to four months via these stress management tools that he was learning to use on himself, he started progressively coming out of it and started functioning very well to the point where he could go back to work. Inside, Dr. John Perino holds seminars like this one regularly. A clinical stress. psychologist for 10 Negative years, he's state. focused his career on the positive use of stress, treating patients so they learn to control stress for more productive work and more effective personal living. In his own life, Dr. Perino is highly athletic, one way he's found to relieve his own stressful situations. His book, From people, Panic to Power, is, is a revealing account of what he and others have learned about human responses to stress, the pressure of contemporary the lifestyles. He has documented up. dramatic changes in patients suffering everything from insomnia to amnesia to or worse. Stress is a resident critic working inside of your head. When you wake up in the morning, it tells you you're late. When you look in the mirror, it tells you you're getting older. When you arrive at the office, it tells you you're behind. At a cocktail party, 
it tells you you're boring. And when you fall in love, it tells you you're not good enough. The major stress emotions are anxiety, anger, and depression, and hundreds of variations of them as they vary from one individual to another. It's the prolonged periods of stress with no let-up that have the potential of causing serious health problems. Uncontrolled, there is a growing body of evidence, says Dr. Perino, showing that stress leads not only to ulcers, but other severe mental and physical breakdowns like heart attack and stroke. Those can be ultimately disastrous in their effect. In the meantime, Perino says, stress can keep you emotionally miserable. I tend to say, oh my God, this is so terrible. Oh, I can't stand it, it's so awful. Oh, my world is gonna fall apart. The earth is gonna open up and swallow me inside and all those kinds of awfulizing statements that we make. <clears throat> Again, what you find in this kind of a situation, stress level goes up, negative thoughts go on the increase, and then you start worrying, you start criticizing, you start awfulizing, and then you have reactions to the reactions. You, call, you kind of get in a cycle, a vicious cycle of preoccupations. And one thing about stress is, it keeps you preoccupied with the, pre the past and apprehensive about the future, and you can't enjoy the moment. But Dr. Perino has methods to show his patients how to control their stress and anxieties and live each day to its fullest. For at least four major areas of importance, learning what stress is, taking a test to find out your behavior profile or what kind of personality and character you are with an interview, biofeedback if you need it, and relaxation exercises. The last two need some explanation. Using a polygraph, Dr. Perino can literally show a client what upsets them and how to control it. Your muscle tension seems to be increasing. You're definitely getting some changes in blood volume. That must mean that you, you were uptight about it. Yes. The basic idea behind the muscular relaxation technique is to isometrically contract various muscle groups in your body. And you do that by clasping your hands together as tightly as you can. Now, this is for the chest region. I want you to clasp your hands together. Keep your eyes closed because I'm going to make certain suggestions to you as we contract the muscles together. All right, everybody push in as hard as you can, as tightly as you can. You'll notice maybe that your arms are starting to vibrate somewhat. Take a deep breath. Now slowly let the breath out and the tension go at the same time. Perino and Shields, to this day, believe his amazing and complete recovery was the result of awareness of what may have triggered it. That was the pressure of an intense job coupled with overwhelming personal problems that ended in divorce from his first wife. Turn on your teleprompters. Four, three, two, one, out. Does managing and controlling your stress work? In the decade since his illness, Paul Shields each day religiously practices his relaxation exercises. He has remarried happily, has two children, and is as vibrant a person and broadcaster as ever. Uh, I find myself now uh, with the uh, tension thing and the stress. Every once in a while, I'm sitting at the typewriter, and it's 11.30, quarter to 12. I've got two more stories to write, and I've got to bang upstairs on the air. <sighs> and you can literally feel the stress start to leave your body. I know that sounds foolish, but over the conditioning period, why, uh, it does work. At least it's worked for me. Ken Strayhorn is the sports director here at Channel 8, and he's got a rather unusual way to calm down before each newscast. What do you do? Matt, I go out and jog about four miles. Four miles of running, then he faces those hot lights. This guy's dedicated. Well, don't go away, because in a moment, I'll be back with a look at tonight's PM Magazine department. Mr. Merritt, JoJo keeps scratching. Must be the heat. Well, more likely. Please. When it gets hotter, please get more active. Dogs and cats need a flea and tick collar that's temperature sensitive. Sergeant Sentry 5, the only collar with two ingredients. One gives steady protection. The other gives extra protection when it gets hotter. Sergeant Sentry 5 collar works harder when it gets hotter. From the TV8 community calendar, Hanover County's Mental Retardation Services needs volunteers to help with its summer camp program. The camp will be held at Gandhi School in Ashland during the month of July from 10 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon. Volunteers will be trained and supervised by professional staff. For additional information, please call Joan Jones at 798-5437.
as we've just seen, the television news business might not be so good for your heart. But tonight in our departments, we'll find out about some things that are. But first in our home department, Jerry Baker shows us how to banish moles and gophers from our lawn. In the self department, Captain Carrot tells us why oats and oat products are good for our hearts. And in the discovery department, Joan Embry introduces Tandy, a beautiful red-tailed hawk. I bet you, you don't know what problem causes more lawns to be tore up in the United States than any other. I'm Jerry Baker, and I'm going to tell you that it's moles and gophers. And you're all looking for ways to get rid of them. I got the best way in the world, my co-star, Big George. Alligators would be great. And here at Silver Springs Park, we got a ton of them, but you don't in your yard. So let's take another old wives' tale. Beer bottles, pop bottles, and Coke bottles. Great deterrence. Dig a hole in their run and bury the bottle so only the neck sticks out of the soil, like that. Now the wind blows across and goes, woo, 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 woo. Says, anything that plays that bad, I'm not going to that concert. Hey, it really works. But then, one of the best ways, of course, is to get rid of their source of food. They're really telling you, you got a lawn problem with diseases and insects in there, but primarily insects, and that's where they're eating, or grubs. Aerate, punch holes in the area where they're working the most with this thing that I build or any commercial one that you buy. Now, you can use a dry material if you use a dry material for soil insects, make sure that you apply it as recommended, and then water it in with a solution of soap and water. Remember, it's a half a cup of liquid dish soap for 20 gallons of water. That means that the chemical will go down and kill the insects where they're around. If you're using a liquid application, a chemical design for that, make sure that in addition to the chemical itself into here, you put the soap so that that then penetrates the soil because there's a surface tension that's sort of a, of a coating that goes over the soil and doesn't let penetration. When you do that, what happens is the gophers come for dinner and find out somebody ate it up. The cupboards are bare, and you don't have a gopher, mole, or shrew problem anymore. You know, the people of Scotland are a hearty lot, and while there are many reasons given for their condition, their love of oats is seen as one of the prime reasons. Now, oats in this country underwent a renaissance a few years ago when granola became the rage of the land. And if your consumption of oats increased during this period, well, so much the better, because this versatile grain apparently has factors in it that may be kindly toward your heart. Dr. Hans Fischer, chairman of the Department of Nutrition at Rutgers University, says that oats have a cholesterol-lowering effect. Dr. Fischer and his fellow scientists say the anti-cholesterol effect of oats uh, became apparent to them when they were doing research on animals. According to the doctor, the people of Holland have taken this research quite seriously. And for the past five years, they've been producing an oat flour bread. According to Dr. Fisher, their cholesterol levels today are generally lower than they were before. And Dr. Julian Whitaker, the California Heart Medical Clinic in Huntington Beach, says it's the fiber in the oats that's responsible for its cholesterol-lowering effect. And both doctors agree that you should eat oats or oat products at least two or three times a week to get the benefit. So how can you lose something that tastes good, and at the same time, it's good for your heart? If someone told you you had eyes like a hawk, they'd be paying you quite a compliment because birds of prey are known for their excellent eyesight. Hi, I'm Joan Embry here at the San Diego Zoo, and this is Tandy, our red-tailed hawk. Hawks are birds of prey and hunt for small mammals, birds, reptiles, and insects to survive. They are very beneficial in keeping the pest population down. The hawk's outstanding vision aids them with their hunting. They can spot a tiny mouse or grasshopper scampering across the ground from as high as 500 feet in the air. Powerful curved claws or talons grasp and transport the prey, and strong hook beaks tear it. In the wild, red-tailed hawks begin to hunt when they're about seven weeks old. These four-week-old chicks are being raised by a California state fish and game official and soon will be turned over to falconers to be taught how to hunt. It's hoped that when they're released, they'll be able to fend for themselves. The mother of these chicks was killed by a poacher, even though all hawks and other birds of prey are protected by state and federal laws. These young hawks are lucky because they were rescued. Fortunately, the red-tailed hawks have not met with the same fate as some of the other endangered birds of prey, like the bald eagle and the California condor. They're very common throughout North America. So next time you're out driving and you happen to see a hawk-like bird, it might just be one of Tandy's relatives. Yeah. 
don't go away because in a moment we'll bring you the best of the barbershop quartets. We're gonna go Hawaiian. Hawaiian punch is the taste, the one and only taste. That really goes Hawaiian. Hawaiian Punch is more than just a cold drink. It's seven natural tropical fruits come together with 10% fruit juice for the taste everybody loves. Go Hawaiian! Go Hawaiian! And now say aloha to delicious new tropical fruit. Aloha tropical fruit. A new flavor, Donnie. Luscious new tropical fruit. Aloha tropical fruit. Right. got pride in what we're doing, working hard to make things better. And what's going on around us, we're sharing it together. When we get the news from friends, it makes our day feel great. And we know that we can count on our friends at Channel 8, moving up to 8. And it sure feels good, moving up to 8. Sure feels good. Now at McDonald's, get a great Muppet caper glass featuring Fozzie Bear, that daredevil, or should I say, bear devil, along with his pals Gonzo and Kermit. They're flying high, but you'll be the one on cloud nine because they're all on a glass in a scene from the new Great Muppet Caper movie. And this glass can be yours at a special price. Fozzie Bear! When you buy any medium-sized soft drink this week at McDonald's. So take off from McDonald's and get your Muppet glass this week. It'll be an uplifting experience. This is Sheer Harmony, a quartet from Norfolk. They are one of over a thousand barbershop quartets that are registered with the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America, Incorporated. Now, if you think that's a mouthful, wait till you hear the sounds coming from this harmony-hungry multitude, because PM Magazine's Jim Montgomery is going to take us to their annual convention. It's not every day one can listen to such perfect harmony from over 10,000 voices. But what else would you expect at the 42nd Annual Convention of the International Barbershop Quartet Society? Since the latter years of the Great Depression, the largest singing fraternity in the world, over 40,000 members strong, has been sharing its special love of song with each other and cities like Salt Lake in what must be the longest running vocal love in on record, seven days and nights. And you don't need a waxed mustache or an 1890s garter on your sleeve to sing barbershop harmony. Like the Harrington Brothers from Columbus, Ohio. Crackers, animal crackers, bears, and tigers hunt me all day. The conventioneers sing to anyone. There's a guy over there. Hey, what's a lead, huh? Yeah. Hey, Wes? And where else can four guys who have never met... Do you want to sing a song? Sure. ...get together and start singing perfect harmony? You're the lead. You have to pick the song. Wild Irish Rose. That's good. Wild Irish Rose. You guys know that? I think I've sung that a few times this weekend. My, my. young and old. Their ranks have included Harry Truman and Donny Osmond. And they're used to making history as well as music. Lloyd Steinkamp, lifelong member and quartet judge, explains. The Barbershopping Society began in 1938, uh, and it, was be it, it had its origin. I wish I could impress you more, but I have to give you the facts, and that is that uh, two men, uh, boyhood friends from Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
uh, met each other in the Mule Buck Hotel in Kansas City and on each on business trips. And they were talking to each other uh, about how's the family, uh, the, do you ever see Jim anymore or Pete or whatever. And they, they reflected on the days when they were young men, how they used to gather at the street corner and uh, sing what we call barbershop harmony. Never was in style. Now you know the future's brighter when hearts are lighter. Smile, Danya, smile, smile. And uh, they had such a good time they decided to set another meeting two weeks later. And 75 men showed up. And it was beginning to get out of hand then. And then some three weeks after that, they had over 150 members, uh, 150 men singing with no printed music, just remembering and harmonizing. And with tongue in cheek, our founder said, this is the first meeting of the SPPBSQSUS. Uh, the Society for the Preservation and Propagation of Barbershop Quartet Singing in the United States. And when asked why so many letters, he said, well, Roosevelt has the PWA, the CCC, the NRA. I want an organization with more letters than all of them put together. Our song was a song of tomorrow. And no true blue American event would be complete without spirited competition. And the SPEBSQA is no exception. The highlights of the convention are the contest to determine the champion international quartet and chorus. The nerves run high, emotions deep, the costuming is elaborate, and the judging criteria very serious. Four categories must be perfect. Sound, interpretation, stage presence, and arrangement. Outgoing 1979 international champions, Grandma's Boys from Chicago, display their winning form. spotlights and the revelry of the long nights the contestants feel a true reverence for friendship and the joy of song that stretches the soul the mormon tabernacle choir and the 1979 chorus champions the vocal majority from dallas texas has a motto it's we sing that they shall speak that's because they have a service organization called the Institute of Logopedics in Wichita Kansas there they do research for children with hearing and speech defects it's very worthwhile work in a moment Matt and I'll be back with a preview of Monday's PM magazine the first Valley's restaurant opened at Portland Maine in 1933 times were tough the valleys were tougher prime rib p-r-i-m-e right mr valley and don't give them one lobster give them two yes sir and keep the price low and though 48 years have come and gone we still abide by the same uncompromising standards set up by the valley family back in 1933 get to the special will you sirloin steak 850 or all you can eat crab legs only 9.95 your first pet. Will you ever forget the day you got him? Well, by the time Spot and I got acquainted, I was ready for some Kool-Aid. I loved it. And Mom loved it, because it was economical. Still is. With my sugar, Kool-Aid unsweetens about one-third the price of soda. Has vitamin C, soda doesn't. 
And with that fruity taste, it's a kid's second best friend. You loved it as a kid, you trust it as a mother. Kool-Aid brand unsweetened soft drink mix. You make an extra effort in everything you do. This extra effort sometimes means not eating the way you should. Now make the extra effort to fortify your diet with All B C 800, our extra strength vitamin formula. All B C 800 gives you extra strength in vitamin C with 800 milligrams, plus extra strength in four essential B complex vitamins. All B C 800 or All B C 800 plus iron for women, our extra strength vitamin formula for extra effort people. All B C 800. Hi, I'm Miss Sunbeam, and for years I've had the softest job in the whole world, telling you about Sunbeam, the original soft bread. For more than a generation, it's been made a special way to put extra softness in every slice. That's why everything you put between two slices tastes extra good. Look for me, and remember, the original soft bread is still just as soft and fresh today. Sunbeam, baked by the Flowers family. Thank you. Matt, did you know this is America's original ice cream cone? Well, I'm kind of finding that out firsthand <laughs> here. Now, you did a story on Dumars about a year ago, mm -hmm. didn't you? Well, they're still here in downtown Norfolk on Route 460, so come by and give them a try yourself. On Monday's PM Magazine, we're going to meet a Hanover County man who has grown one of the largest herds of the world's smallest horses. Then discover how some folks beat the 9 to 5 routine through job sharing. We'll meet two people who share one job, and we'll see how it works for them. In our department, Chef Tell prepares tangy cold tomato soup. Dr. Jim Wasco reveals the good and bad side of aspirin use. And Linda Harris visits Puerto Vallarta, a beautiful Mexican seaside resort. That's all on Monday's PM Magazine. Try and be with us. We're going to gorge ourselves here. Have a good weekend. <laughs> good night. Good night.